put up 10 runs in their midweek win against Georgia State, but their last two SEC games, just one run in their last 18 innings. First pitch to Slate Alford fouled straight back. Yeah, they, uh, they were red hot going into Knoxville last weekend, put up a couple of football scores in game one and game two of the series against Tennessee last weekend. And since then, it's been kind of crickets for this Georgia offense that's been so spectacular the first half of the season. One and one to Alford, a 323 hitter, eight homers and 32 runs batted in. Just stays inside. Two and one to count. And welcome to Duty Noble here in Starkville, Mississippi. Dave Deal and former Tennessee All-American and big leaguer Chris Burke. Glad you could join us. First batter of the game for the Bulldogs. Slate Alford, the former Mississippi State Bulldog. Slaps one through the right side on a 2-1 count against this guy, Gerangelo Sanja. The pitcher who can throw right-handed and left-handed. First batter of the game, Alfred, though, delivers a base knock for the Bulldogs, who lost last night to this Mississippi State team by the final of 6-1. to one. Mississippi State put up a four spot in the bottom of the eighth for that final difference in the game. So Georgia trying to even up the series. But here is Charlie Condon, the story of college baseball to this point, at least from an offensive perspective, leads the country in home runs. He is hitting 477, but Berkey in a little bit of a slump right now. You knew it was coming, just the odds yes. were coming. He has struggled the last three games at the plate. Just one for his last 11. That does qualify for as a slump when you've been hitting over 500 all year long. So law of averages says he's fixing to bust out. The Bulldogs are hoping it, he waits a couple games. And this one is caught by the shortstop, David Mershon. And that'll be the first out, and that'll keep Alford over at first base. I just realized I got to specify when I say Bulldogs in this game. The Mississippi State Bulldogs are hoping he waits a couple games. That looked like it was going to be a knock into left field. And credit Mississippi State for having a perfect scout there. Marshawn playing deep in the hole out in the grass and takes a hit away from Condon. Gorgeous conditions for Corey Collins at the plate, the senior. He looks at a strike, 67. Not much win tonight. Top four in this lineup last night for Georgia. Just one for 12, a single, no runs, no RBIs. This one's fouled out of play as the crowd continues to file in on this gorgeous evening. So, Dave, this is our first instance where Sanja is not switching to throw left-handed. Even last year, he would have. Last year, he was straight left, left, right, right. But this year, he's mixed and matched a little bit, and he's going to stay right-handed versus the left-handed hitting Collins. And they do it for a few different reasons. Some of it's the matchup. Some of it's what Sanja feels most comfortable with as you take a look at the stuff here for, from him on, from the right side and the left side. You see the fastball ticks up a little higher, and the breaking ball gets more width from the right side, but still really quality stuff from the left side. That ball is ripped. That's a fair ball going to get in the corner. Alford will... Wind up at third. That'll be a double for Corey Collins. And how about this? Corey Collins came in 375 with a dozen homers and 31 runs batted in, but that is his first double of the year. <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of just like if he hits it hard, the ball doesn't stay in the yard. This one he actually top spun a little bit, and I'm sure they're going to give him a hard time. Now watch Baby Bo out here in right field. He's going to throw this thing from the wall to home play. He probably threw that about 75%, just a little two hopper from 330 feet away. No big deal. Now, when he gets in the dugout, somebody's going to say, hey, man, you got to hit your cut. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I think I think if you can throw it two hops right on home plate, they'll live with it. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll go with it. Here's Logan Jordan hitting cleanup. The designated hitter tonight, and that one sails up and in on him, and a hit batter, and that is the sixth hit batter of the year for Sanja. And now George has got him loaded here in the first inning with just one out for Trey Phelps. 
Yeah, and this is, you know, fastball's got some ride life to it. You can see it just shoots up and in. And when that ball starts middle away, that's the one that gets a lot of swings and misses or, or the jam job that we saw against Charlie Condon. But that one got Georgia off to a great start. A much improved Georgia team. There is a strike to Trey Phelps, the right fielder. Trey on the year, hitting 304 with three homers. It slaps this one through the left side. That's going to get a run home. And Georgia with an early one to nothing lead, and the bases are still loaded, and Phelps just picks up his 11th run batted in of the year. Boy, and that was just a rocket as Sanger just struggling with that breaking ball. A hanging slider gets hammered into left field, and see Josh Simpson thought about sending Corey Collins and then rethought it, the big slugger decides to put the brakes on. And so far, Dave, the only hitter who's made out in this inning is the best hitter in the country. Yeah, Condon off the fist to shortstop. Mershon caught it, a little, little blooper. Yeah. I mean, that was inches now away Col from not recording an out to this point. Colby Branch, the sophomore, 276 hitter now. 94 from Sanja. He can get it up to 97 from the right side. Yeah. 94 again. One and two the count. There's that riding life right there. The fastball really plays up. He, he's got a little bit of a low slot and get some induced vertical break, meaning that ball has carry at the top of the zone, and he will get some swings and misses up there. Pumps one up at 95 out of the zone. Colby Branch, the sophomore out of Lucas, Texas, transferred in from Baylor, where he was a freshman All-American last year. Bears, not one of their memorable seasons last year. They went just 20 and 35 in the Big 12, and a swing and a miss there. So Branch is the second out of the inning. Here it is. Just stick with the heater, right? Had success with it early in the AB. The slider doesn't seem to have much of the left hand to turn to it tonight. So they're going to lean on that fastball. A couple, a couple big pitches right there to put away Branch. Still one big out left. If you could get out of this with just one run, you, you're feeling pretty good about it if you're on the Hale State side of things. Lifted in the air off the bat of Clayton Chadwick, and that'll be out to center field. Well, looking for some of that consistency. As an example, they lose their midweek game to Central Arkansas this week. Well, it, it's been interesting, too. Eight of their 11 losses by one run, right? Last weekend against Florida, they, they led for 25 of the 27 innings and only won one game. So that, you know, is... 5-5 five and five in 20 and 11 is certainly, you know, not a reason for panic, but they are really close to being much better than their record would indicate. Monty Larry, the senior, saddles up in that box out of Bossier City, Louisiana. The senior transfer, two years in community college, one year at University of New Orleans, now in his second year with Mississippi State. 52 starts last year, 33 of those. He was the leadoff man in this lineup, a comfort zone for him. Hitting 269 with three home runs and 17 runs batted in. The one two is just off the plate at 97 for Finley. Yeah, see the, the, the stuff, the stuff is is not the question with Finley. Again, the fastball doesn't quite play as firm as the radar gun would indicate. It's just a matter of putting it all together. But Wes Johnson feels like this kid's got a run in him if he can just command the baseball at a little higher level. This is what it looked like last night for Amani Larry. How about this one? A fastball just right down Broadway. A really flat, clean stroke. A rocket into the left field seats to get the party started for Mississippi State on a game where they would 
Put a big number up in the bottom of the eighth to seal that one. And Larry runs the count full at three and two. Ground ball out to second. Slade Alford makes the throw over to Collins, and that'll be the first out of the inning. So here comes David Mershon. He's done a heck of a job, not just defensively, but at the plate this year. Mershon, the sophomore out of Taylor, South Carolina, with eight multi-hit games this year. Started the season on a 12-game hit streak. And has continued to swing it well. Had a couple of hits last night. Can play either one of the middle infielder spots. Yeah, this dude's just a baller. Kind of a throwback baller. Got the rally started last night with a with a bunt base hit. Can do a lot of different things. And has a lot of gear. He is. He's dripped out. He's as drippy as it gets. <laughs> And, uh, you know, he's got the Tanner Allen throwback football pants on above the knee. Shout out to Tanner Allen if he's listening. They might be playing tonight. 98 for Finley. Here we go. We got the front side shin, here. Shin guard, right? We got the elbow guard, which he does throw right handed. You know, I'll give him that. We got the, the, the face guard. We got the double oven mitt, which puts you in a whole nother class of drip. <laughs> oh uh, we got to get him some TV tape on the wrist, and he'd be set. Oh, he, he probably got it underneath the batting gloves. Ooh, right back up the middle over the head of Finley. Played well there by Colby Branch, and they get the out. Boy, Georgia had him played extremely well with Branch kind of toward the middle of the infield. Yeah, the shift has taken away a lot of hits over the last decade or so. People just doing a really nice job of positioning their guys. And this dude, it's tough to position people in the top of the condos in left field because this is that's that's where he likes to hit them when his barrel's on time. Well, the sophomore. At six feet, 220 pounds, out of Canton, Mississippi. Steps to the plate, hitting 368. First big hack on an 80 mile an hour spinner. Now look, he's hitting 368, and he's 0 for his last 10 over the last three games. But the three games prior to that, he was 7 of 12. 14 homers and 42 runs batted in. Nine doubles thrown in there for Dakota Jordan. Boy, a big time 96 right, right down the middle. Yeah, uh, Leighton Finley with a little, little two-seamer there. And I, I tell you what, I was blown away. We asked Chris Lamonis, you know, it, it cut his teeth as the recruiting coordinator at Louisville when they were really rolling, and then went to Indiana, and now he's been at Mississippi State. He has coached some real dudes. And when I asked him where Dakota Jordan stacked up with the, the list of hitters and, and really prospects that he's coached, he's, he's the best. And there was not a stutter. Am I right, Dave? It was no. a very quick, very quick, very definitive response. And he just looked at 95, painting the black. Finley Pitts. Ole Miss hosts this 23rd ranked Mississippi State Bulldog Club in game one of a three game series from Swayze Field in Oxford. Again, 8 o'clock Eastern time right here on the SEC Network on Friday night. The dude on a Saturday night. It, it, like, there, it doesn't get much better in, in the world of baseball than the dude on a Saturday night. I mean, this place is just magnificent. Look, I feel like we, I feel like the, the awe of the fact that there are condos in left center field has worn off. But can I just mention that there are condos in left center field. <laughs> And plans for another one. Oh, that ball was mashed, but out of play. But yeah, there's there's plans for another yeah. set of condos out there. Yeah, they're talking about, I mean, why not? These things are amazing. Yes, please. And the, the, the there's a bar at the top of it, a bar and grill at the top. I mean, this place, look at the boxes out there. 
it is uh, it's good to see Mississippi State back in the mix and in the hunt, isn't it? I mean, they are uh, they seem to be built for the long haul. They they I I think they're going to be you know in hosting conversation when it's all said and done, and that is good for college baseball. Three and two on Georgia's catcher Fernando Gonzalez. Boy, what a place to play some college baseball. You know, you and I were there for that mm -hmm. Notre Dame Super Regional a few years back, and you want to, I, I can't remember a better environment than that See? weekend. It was now. Off now I'm the excited because I did this to you earlier, and now you just did it to me. That <laughs> was you and KP. Oh, yes. sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought you were there because it was fun. You, you I'm know, having fun with I KP. wasn't there. KP's all but business. But you and I did do the Stanford one. We did do the, the Mississippi okay. State See, I knew you and I did a super there. Yeah. But I, the, the Notre Dame one was, was not me. It's okay, though. <laughs> Throw down to first. Yeah, just for the record. Berkey, last year, th this was a few years ago, just so people understand. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, Berkey said something about, where were you on this, talking about a South Carolina, Florida Super Regional, and it said, where were you that weekend? And I was with him in Gainesville for that Super Regional, so that's why he just paid me back, just to give it you It was a memorable back. weekend, Dave. Thanks for, yes, for all you did. But 12 College World Series, 39 trips to the NCAA, and, of course, the one national championship that Chris Lamonis won in. I guess it's, what was that? I guess it's second full year, right? 1920 yeah. was COVID, and then 21, they win the whole thing behind Tanner Allen and Will Bednar and Rowdy Jordan and the boys. Sebastian Murillo, the senior steps in. Sebastian getting ninth in the lineup, playing third base tonight. Fouls that one straight back. Bunch of pitches in that first inning for Gerangelo Sanja. Georgia picked up a run, left the bases loaded, sent seven guys to the plate. Got a strikeout and a flyout to end the inning before more damage done. That one sails up and away. Georgia only has a couple of left-handed batters in the lineup tonight, so we're going to see a lot of right-handers out there. You talked a little bit about the difference from year one with Gerangelo. Mm -hmm. And here in year two is that they don't just go righty, lefty, lefty, righty kind of matchups anymore. I mean, it's, it is, they feel like if he's going to be good on the right side, that some guys don't, the splits don't say switch arms. Right. Even though traditional baseball thought would be to do so. But that's a paint job right there at 95. Yeah, and I think also, Dave, you know, one thing Justin Parker identified when he came in is we see just gas on the outside edge, Murillo locked up. But they identified the fact that he was behind in the count a ton. And it's hard to not think that's linked to switching sides all the time, right? And so if he finds a nice groove, they're they're apt to just kind of leave him alone unless the splits or the situation just screams, hey, let's Let's turn him around left-handed. But it was really eye-opening talking to Chris Lamonis this week about all the extra work that Sanja has to put in to throw on both sides. I mean, it's he's like two two pitchers. All the arm care, all the bullpen work, all the pregame work, all that. Two and zero on Slate Alford, who singled to start the game and came in to score. Hits that one way up in the air. And that'll be a souvenir. What's really wild, Dave, is that he, he was drafted out of high school as a switch hitting shortstop. So not only does he switch pitch, he switch hits, and was athletic enough to play shortstop so much so that he got drafted. Out straight back. I went back, Berkey, and looked at the perfect game scouting report on him before mm -hmm. he got to college. And he was graded out as a 10, as you might imagine, with being a, you know, just a phenomenal 
high school and travel ball player in the summer. But it, what made me kind of chuckle a little bit is they had him as the number one player nationally, number one pitcher from both sides. <laughs> Swing and a miss. I'm like, who else is throwing righty and lefty? Yeah, exactly. And what amazing run it was for LSU. Such a dynamic team. And boy, they have fallen on some hard times, much like the last three national champs. There seems to be the curse of the national championship, the hangover, if you will. Yeah, it's it's getting a little weird, right? Mississippi State wins it all in 21, misses the tournament in 22. Ole Miss wins the tournament in 22, misses the tournament in 23. And now LSU, after an incredible season last year, is 3-9 and nine in the SEC after dropping a home series to Vanderbilt today. And, uh, man, it is, it is wild to think that LSU is – underwater right now 12 games into conference play and going to Tennessee next weekend mm -hmm. here's Hunter Hines Hunter having a solid season 305 with eight home runs good first inning for Leighton Finley a couple of ground outs and a strike at two and two the count Mississippi State going to have to get on that fastball. I think what's exciting about Hunter Hines is the numbers overall look fine, but you're talking about a kid who's got 46 career home runs, set the Cape Cod record for home runs this past summer, coming off a year in which he hit 22. As that heater just was 98, Dave. 98 from Leighton Finley. But Hunter Hines has gotten it going in conference play. Came into the night hitting 360 with five long balls in SEC play. So he is heating up, and that's very good news for Mississippi State because he's the kind of guy that can carry a team. Of course, Dakota Jordan is the superstar in front of him. You get those two guys both rolling, and that's a, a scary proposition for an opposing pitching staff. Now he gets to face Connor Heisek. Connor hitting fifth in this lineup, 346 on the year, five home runs. The senior transfer out of New Hampshire, a couple of years at VCU. Second year at Mississippi State. Ten multi-hit games this year. There's a strike at 95. Isaac doesn't like it. It's 0-2. Tell you what, they better get going on this heater. They are, they are not being aggressive to the fastball, which is Chris Lamonis and Jake Gotro, the, the hitting guys in that Mississippi State dugout are not going to be happy. There's another heater. They are just not on it. Seven. Three straight strikeouts now for Leighton Finley. And, I mean, this is really well located. But, again, Mississippi State just not ready. He, he, he looked at a first pitch heater. And then now he looks at strike three, and Leighton Finley's not trying to fool anybody right now. He is grabbing the two-seamer and letting it rip. 6-5 right-hander has retired five in a row to start this one, and now he gets Bryce Chance. Mississippi State's left fielder steps in there, and to the right side it goes, base hit. He was ready to hit the fastball, 96 miles an hour. And he'll stand at first base with two outs. So Leighton Finley came into this ballgame, Dave, averaging nine, a tick over 93 miles an hour on his fastball. You know, we're only 22 pitches in, but I would say he's averaging 96 tonight. Right? I mean, we've seen 95 to 97 on every fastball he's thrown. So he's obviously got his A-plus heater tonight, and this is just where Mississippi State has got to say, well, the scouting report said one thing, but... My eyeballs are telling me another. Now Aaron Downs, designated hitter. The juniors strolling up to the plate. He looks at 94, first pitch strike. Mississippi State last night had just six hits, but produced six runs, a couple of walks. 
There's a little chopper to third, fielded there by Murillo. And that'll be the third out of the inning. So the single off the bat of Bryce Chance, good with the, the pitch clock between innings, as long as you are ready to pitch when it's, the clock expires. And you better be ready to pitch when the clock expires with Mr. Condon up to bat. He got Condon on a little line drive to short his first time up. And now he's ahead 0-2. We got two pitchers that are trusting their fastball right now, Dave. It is a yes. fastball fest in this game. Condon tardy on both the first two offerings here from Sanja, as he has certainly found something here with his fastball. All right, now that's three straight heaters. The, the breaking ball was getting hammered in the first inning. And you just wonder against a hitter of Condon's stature, like if you get too predictable, is he going to eventually corner you and take advantage? Boy, a nice fastball down and away. Fouled back by Condon. Georgia, again, leads the country in home runs. And this guy, a big part of it with a Division I leading 19 home runs. 25 of those a year ago. There's a breaking ball down. So that was the, the big curveball. You got to throw one of them, right? You, you got to at least change speeds, change his eye level. I, I, I think if I was Condon right here, I'd put that one in the back of my mind and hunt the heater. There's another break ball. See, the slider's like 88, and it's just not doing anything right now, Dave. That, that slider is just hovering. The pitch before was more of a curveball that at least had some bend to it. But, you know, I just think right now, if you're a Georgia hitter, I, would, I wouldn't I would really even pay much attention to the breaking ball and just get ready for the heater. Oh, change up. Now, I like that pitch. Now, that was interesting. Had some really good depth to it, too. Coming into the game, threw about 10% change up, so you'll see it from him. Condit goes down swinging. Maybe he found something, Dave. That was far and away the best breaking ball of the night. And so uh, he went curveball, slider, changeup, slider. And that one had some depth to it, some bite there the last couple feet. And that's what he's looking for as he wins a nine-pitch battle against Charlie Condon. Condon proving to be a little human now. In the last three or four games. Now one for his last 13. Swing and a miss there. One and one to count to Corey Collins, who doubled his first time up. Twelve homers and 31 runs batted in. And he looks at a strike, it's one and two. Last week he was on a tear. He had a, a string of five games where he hit eight home runs and was hitting over 600 during that stretch. He's got, and just he, picked he could, up his first double of the year. <laughs> just picked up. Dave, he came into the game with 12 homers and 56 at bats. Like, I've had to check my stat sheet like six times to make sure that wasn't a misprint. He's, he's in a homer every four and a half ABs. Fouls that one up toward the line, and that'll get into the seats. Condon's about one out of every six leads the country. And, you know, Collins started the year banged up, and so his ABs are, he's got, you know, about half of the abats that Condon has. Foul tipped, couldn't hang on. Johnny Long back there behind the plate. So the 2-2. Another fastball. A little giddy up on that one at 97.
That one's off the plate, three and two now. Yeah, you know what, Dave? This one, this one would have been a matchup where you thought maybe he'd go lefty because not only is Collins left-handed, and he's hitting about 120 points lower against lefties, but he had a double his first day B, but why? When you got that swing and miss changeup, just go up there and pull the string on him. And how many times we said it, Dave, if you don't get a starting pitcher in the first, you might not get them, right? They had him on the ropes, they had the bases loaded, they got one run, and since then, boy, has he found a rhythm. Is that five straight punches? That five is five straight. straight punches, and yeah. six of the last seven. Yes, six of the last seven, and they had him on the ropes with the bases loaded and one run across. And now Logan Jordan, who was hit by a pitch his first time, with the bases empty and two outs. Now it's 0-2. Starting to find that breaking ball a little bit. Well, he's found the changeup. Now if you throw this breaking ball in there, he's going to have his three-pitch mix working. Mm -hmm. Could be a long night. Yeah, the, the fastball has been there from the jump, but it, it's taken him a little bit to feel comfortable with, with the off-speed stuff. Mm -hmm. Did he go? No. Ooh. I thought the barrel went past the point, and no, it didn't. Nice call there by first base umpire Derek, Derek Malika. Called strike three, 96, paint in the black, and the inning is over. We move to the bottom of the third inning. Getting kind of hungry now. Jeez. <laughs> Logan Kohler, the senior out of Texas, strolling to the plate for his first at bat. Leighton Finley has looked fantastic to this point for the Bulldogs of Georgia. And you're right, Berkey. We I've seen this is the second time I've seen or third time I've seen Finley pitch this year. And I don't yep. remember him pumping him up there at 96 and 97 like this. No. No. I mean the the, the data is pretty clear. I mean his, he's normally 93, 94. There's that change up. Hmm. You know, Dave, we, talk, we talked about Hunter Hines getting going for Mississippi State. This is this is a bat and Logan Kohler. He had 11 home runs last year at Memphis. This is a guy that they expected to come here and hit for some power, and he just hadn't gotten it going. And they they need him to start helping the bottom third of this lineup because it's it's been a struggle for Mississippi State down at the bottom. There's a base hit back up the middle. To start the third half for Mississippi State. Second hit by the Bulldogs from Starkville. Well, you better believe they're talking in the dugout about getting on the fastball. Let's see how tidy this path is. A to B, and that is a clean move, right? You're going to hit 95, 97 miles an hour. You cannot have any wasted barrel time in the backside of the swing. That thing's got to arrive in the hitting zone suddenly. And that was a really nice path there by Kohler. Mississippi State trying to get a little something going here. Bunt down the right side. Oh, beautiful. Oh. And they can't get the out at first. Finley tried to scoop it with his glove. Collins couldn't hang on to it. And now they'll be at first and second and nobody out. And what a job by Johnny Long to lay that bunt down in a perfect spot. Leighton Finley's got to be ticked. And he's wearing it really well. But this is as nifty of a play by a pitcher I mean, Leighton Finley's six foot five, Dave. I mean, this is this is a big man going after this baseball, and for him to get to it, glove it, and get it accurately to Corey Collins, and Collins not be able to finish it off, boy, that has got to be frustrating because Finley did all he possibly could to record that out. 
Go back to second. As Amani Larry steps back in as the lineup flips over. Amani grounded out his first time up. He squares up to lay down a bunt. Yeah, I think I think you do it again here. Try to chase that fastball. Misses 95 miles an hour. And one of the reasons you see Mississippi State playing this small ball, Berkey, is you look at the numbers, they have hit, are you ready for this? 50, 50 less home runs than the Georgia Bulldogs this year. Yeah, no, it's it's they're 11th in the league in homers, right? So they got to be creative. They got Jordan and Hines due up here in a couple hitters. They want to make sure those guys get a chance with runners in scoring position. That bunt is laid down. Collins will throw to the second baseman. Rashawn grounded out to shortstop his first time up. A couple of hits last night. On the year, hitting 340. Misses just off the plate, 1 and 0. Rashawn playing a bunch of shortstop of late. Dylan Cup there, a super talented freshman shortstop. Banged up, so Mershon's moved over to shortstop. That is allowed. Monty Larry get a lot of reps at second base. Now it's 2-0. Yeah. Oh. Both players playing well, right? I mean, I, we assume Cup will get back in there when he's fully healthy, but Mershon especially has been fantastic. I mean, do you just go ahead and put him on here? I mean, you see who's on deck? I mean, do you, want, do you want to just put another runner on without at least attempting to get him out? I might let Mershon swing at that 3-0, to be honest with you. Yeah, you, you knew that was going to be a gutter ball. There was no two ways about that. Another one right down the belly, fouled back. So now you got a 3-2 count. Finley one pitch away, picking up the second out of the inning. But you know what you're going to get. This is going to be gas. This is going to be right down Broadway. And probably with a little arm side run, right? So if you're Marshawn, just keep your chest down. Keep that barrel working back through the middle of the field. Try to drive something either on the ground or in the air back through the middle and at least get one across. Way off the plate, and they are now loaded. Georgia had him loaded in the first, could only pick up one run. Let's see what Mississippi State does with their chance. With three runners on, only one out of the inning. And this man, Dakota Jordan, to the plate. Leighton Finley has been fantastic in this ball game, but when you walk Marshawn to load the bases in front of Dakota Jordan, you are playing with fire. Got him with all heaters last time. Breaking ball off the plate. Logan Kohler, who singled, is over at third. Johnny Long. Reached on a perfect bunt, stands at second. And Mershon, who just walked over at first base now for Mississippi State. George is going to get some people moving in the pin. Isn't this crazy? Leighton Finley was on cruise control. 
jumping up the charts, according to his coach Chris, Chris Limonis, now kind of in the middle of the draft in the first round. This one is smoked out to left. That one is caught on a hop by Chadwick on his heels, and two runs will come in to score. Dakota Jordan. Breaks an 0 for 11 stretch with a two a, a two run single to left field. Well, you know it's funny we talked with Chris Lamonis about his pitch recognition. Watch this, day. This is a a breaking ball. You can see the pause as his timing was for the heater, but he gets a big breaking ball, recognizes it, gathers and hits a rocket into left field. I tell you what, Chadwick's lucky that ball didn't get all the way to the wall, and clear the bases. But a big swing of the bat right there by Baby Bo to put Hale State up a run here with now a dangerous Hines stepping to the plate. Go back to second, trying to get Mershon diving back. But man, you know, it was right a single there. base hit to start this inning, back mm -hmm. up the middle. But then that bunt, which could have been an out, probably should have been an out, a sacrifice yep. and a walk. I mean, it's not like... The hardest hit ball was the one just a moment ago by Jordan. They tried to get it, they, they got him. He's out. What are they doing? Wow. What a miscue by Mississippi State, second out of the inning. He, he, he was almost out to play before. Like, you got Hunter Hines up. And then he comes right back with it, and you get picked off. Like, back-to-back -back plays. Well, that's a lonely jog right there. Notice you're not getting a whole lot of it's all good, buddy. But <laughs> you're getting you're not getting a whole lot of love on that jog back to the dugout. Look, Lim is all over him. Yeah, Lim is all over him. And he should be. Like, bro, we almost got picked off the pitch before. You gotta shorten your lead. We got Hunter Hines up to bat. We got all the momentum. But Lim is hot and, oh, and yeah. deservedly so. Hat got a little crooked. He was straight. Now it's a little crooked. Oh no! It's yeah. It's, that's it's that's not a good sign. <laughs> I'm gonna let you ask the first question. Yeah. When we yeah. talk to him next inning. Well. Uh, uh, what do, What do the law of averages say after you get picked off, Dave? What's the hitter usually do? It's base knock. Yeah, it's just probably about to be a rocket. Good change up. Swing and a miss, two and one. Hunter Hines struck out his first time. The junior out of Madison, Mississippi. Well, he has a nice collegiate resume. First team all SEC last year. Dick Hauser Award semifinalist, was an SEC all. Freshman team and a freshman All-American. But another one swings over the top. Two with two. Back-to-back change-ups. You see him starting to go more to the off-speed second time through the order here. Got him again. And the inning is over, and it could have been a... He's <laughs> dropping the mitt. <laughs> Hey, Dave Neal, Chris Burke, and joining us, Chris Lamonis down in that Mississippi State dugout. And uh, certainly, Coach, uh, let's start with Gerangelo, first of all. Um, after a few pitches, it seems like he's really settling in. How, how does he look compared to some other starts this year? Hey, it was a little slow starting. Couldn't find the off speed. You know, hung mm -hmm. a slider, hung a change up there in the first. Uh, but he found it. I think he's found that, and he's starting to lock in right here. And it's just such a good lineup with these guys. I mean, you don't get a break in this lineup. Mm. Lim, we, we spoke for a while yesterday about Dakota Jordan and his development and how you feel like he's still trending up. There's a lot of baseball and a lot of learning in front of him. He sits on a breaking ball right there. Actually didn't sit on it, recognized it in yeah. an RBI situation. Tell us about his development and where you see him at and where you think he could go. Well, I, I think he's one of the better players in the country. And, and like you said, he has good eyes. He sees it. He really mm -hmm. does. He doesn't swing and miss it at, at too much. And, um, he can hit the fastball, and he can also hit the breaking ball there and um, had a big swing. 
Lim, last thing. We've we got to go back and talk about the Mershon base running error. And the guy, you just said, he's a great base runner. I mean, one of the best you've, you've been around. What do you say, like, in that, like, from a coach's perspective in the middle of a game? Do you let it go, deal with it later? How do you handle that? I let it go. So, uh, like I said, he is a phenomenal base runner, not just a good one. And uh, probably didn't put together everything happening in the game. And you hate to burk your nose. You don't want to take the aggressiveness out of those great runners. But we will talk about it at some point in time, I promise. Yeah, I, th I thought you would. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, listen, I'm we'll let you I'm sending a hug uh, your way, bro. I'm uh, sending yes. a hug your way. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. We'll let you get All back right. to business. I appreciate the time, buddy. Thank you. Right. Nice play wow, there play. to get the out at first base. Lim's a great one, and uh, you guys go way back. I know your, your history with him is uh, long uh, uh, and just a great college baseball guy. He, he really is, and this ball smoked, and Larry didn't get it clean the first time, but what a quick transition to put away Phelps at first base. That Usually you don't pick it up with the glove after you drew. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know, Dave. So the out will be reversed. He's safe. Georgia retains their challenge. They have two remaining. There you go. Georgia keeps their challenge. They still have two, and they'll have a runner at first base, and Trey Phelps, after the call, is overturned. Well, it, it, back to Lim, Dave. He, he just one of the best guys you'll ever meet. And this is a very big job, right? And it popped up and caught behind the plate by Johnny Long. Colby Branch gifts Mississippi State an out. Well, we've seen both teams try to play small ball. Mississippi State has executed better to this point as we see Colby Branch just lose the barrel, watch the barrel. We talked about Johnny Long hitting the top of the baseball and Armani Larry hitting the top of the baseball. You can see Colby Branch drops the barrel, bottom of the baseball right there, and that's an easy out for Mississippi State. Here is Clayton Chadwick. Flew out his first time up. But you were talking about Lim and this job, Berkey, and, and, and the, the magnitude of Mississippi yeah. State, being the Mississippi State head coach. It, it's a huge job. And, and look, I, I know that it's not their standard to miss the tournament two years in a row. That said, he went to Omaha two times in a row and won the school's only national championship, right? And you look at the injuries that – that they've had over the last two years on the pitching staff especially. And there is no program that would be able to withstand that many injuries. To third, they'll try to turn two and they'll get one out at second base. But a sharply hit ball fielded well by Logan Kohler over there at the hot corner. Mississippi State is playing some world-class defense. They're looking to see if he caught it in the air. Oh, look, they're, they're talking about Phelps sliding into second base here. Oh, he peeled off. But no, that you're allowed to do that now. That's a uh, used to have to slide, but now you can you can peel off. Uh, anyway, I, I would just say that I know Mississippi State fans want to be in the mix. They want to be hosting regionals. They want to be hosting supers. They want to be in Omaha. But I think this team is is trending back in the right direction. I think they're going to be in the mix down the stretch. And, you know, I think when you go to two straight college World Series and win a national championship, you've owned, you've earned yourself some slack. And I, I, I'm happy for Lim and the program that they, they seem to have righted the ship and headed back in the right direction. It helps when you got a guy like Durangelo Sanja on the bump. That one's fouled straight back off the bat of Gonzalez. Pitch count up to 70 now for Durangelo. Young man who was born in the Netherlands, grew up in Curacao, moved to the States, and played high school baseball in South Florida, but actually went to the Little League World Series back in 2016 with a Curacao team. His dad played some pro ball overseas. And just comes from a baseball family, and he is a super, super talented, unique individual for sure. Yeah, and what I find amazing is that, you know, most pitchers want to be position players, 
right? And the fact that he got drafted as a position player but came to school because he wanted to pitch, I think is fascinating. And, you know, his skill set is, again, we talked about it off the top, his skill set's one of one. I mean, again, not only does nobody switch pitch, but he also was talented enough to be a switch hitting shortstop. So, like, you know, from a skill standpoint, this kid is a unicorn, but he really wanted to pitch, and that's why he came to Mississippi State. Up to 97 right there. We have not seen him throw from the left side tonight. No, and it's interesting because the pitch count's now up to 73, right? And Lim talked about that they like to throw him left-handed some just to somewhat keep the pitch count down from the right side. To short, this should get the maroon and white to the dugout, and it will. So maybe And then big hit Matt came up there a couple hitters later and hit a, I think, a three-run homer in the place about caved in. What a team. What a team, what a night. I mean, obviously Jake Mangum and and the storybook career he had, but Elijah McNamee and, and all the big hits he had come through with in his career, for him to hit one in his last A-B was just storybook. Isaac at the plate, ahead 1-0 and on Leighton Finley. Nice little spinner in there for a strike, 1-1 one one the count. I feel like big hit Mac too, should get credit, like some sort of um, licensing agreement where you know everybody does the I love you now coming around the bases you know yeah. where they put their hands he started that with the right field lounge like that was his thing swing and a miss one and two that team had a lot of things going on there were a lot of little inside things with that group mm -hmm. right the last and couple in 21, of years. Ten, 21 Allen and Jordan started the High pants, which is taking youth baseball by storm. I mean, there's not a travel ball team in the country that doesn't have at least a couple kids rocking the, the high waters. Down the right field line. And a long run there for Trey Phelps. And he'll catch up to it. That'll be out number one. What year was it when the banana stuff was going on? How far back yeah. was that? I'm losing track of I think of my that years. was 2018. Wasn't that Jordan okay. Westberg? I think that was the year before, maybe. It was in the big league. The banana now, by play. Way. That thing, by the, yeah, no joke. Yeah, just uh, congrats to him. I think Justin Foscue got the call up recently, too. Some of those stars of years past are making their way to the, to the show. Told it was 2019 for the bananas. They okay, so it was that same year. Say. Okay. It all come, at our age, they all seem. It starts to run together. Yeah. <laughs> I think that banana year was when Mississippi State went down to Tallahassee and won that regional. Well, that was that, that was not 2019, but I thought that was the year before when Big Hit Mac hit the okay. home run to beat Florida State in Tallahassee, right? Yeah, after the rain delay. And then they went to Vandy and beat Vandy in Nashville in the Super. What a run for that team. Incredible. Georgia's looking to get back. You know, they had some nice runs back in the 90s. Ron Polk actually coached Georgia for a couple of years. Yeah, had, it, that was I mean, 2001. They were in the College World Series with Jeff Keppinger. Then, of course, Beckham in, in 08, where they, you know, were in the finals. And they hosted a regional a couple years there with the Emerson Hancock crew. Three and two the count. Yeah, David Perno had a couple of good runs mm -hmm. when he was the skipper for the Georgia Bulldogs. Here's the three two. Finley's fastball's ticking down just a bit. That was 93. We've seen 93, 94, a couple 95s, but he was sitting uh -huh. 96, 97 the first two innings. Yeah, the, the heater's starting to normalize a little bit after coming out 
on fire with the, with the four-seam, two-seam combo that he was running up there. In the late 80s, early 90s. Also being honored before the game today. That one has popped up into shallow center field. Here comes Charlie Condon. We're coming to make the catch. That'll be two down. Charlie Condon. But what if I'd have told you last year when he had just emerged on the scene as a first baseman that a year from now he'd be playing center field. So he started a game at five different positions this year, including third base and center field, which are you know, premium defensive spots. And, you know, big part of the reason that he's being talked about as the number one pick in the draft is as much for what he's shown with his defensive versatility as it is with the bat. Everybody felt pretty good about the bat, and obviously it's even surpassed expectations this year. But a, the biggest jump in the Charlie Condon profile has been the defense. Slow roller past Finley, but scooped up there by Alford. Dave Neal, Chris Burke, and joining us down in that George Bulldog dugout is their head coach, Wes Johnson. Coach, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's start, first of all, with your pitcher tonight, Leighton Finley, who uh, who looks really good tonight. You're saying kind of the growth. You're starting to see that kind of go game by game now. Yeah, Leighton, Leighton works really hard. Uh, he, he works really hard in the weight room, and then obviously, you know, with his throw in. And, and we're starting to see him time up. You know, he's been a reliever most of his career. And he's learning how to get into that. So, you know, he's starting to settle into a good starter's routine. Yeah, you can see that the fastball is really starting to tick up. Change up has been really good at times. I, I'm, I'm interested in the offense, Wes. You know, you guys were so prolific early. And here the last two and a half SEC games, man, it's been tough sledding. What's the message to the offense right now? How are you trying to re-energize those guys? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, is you know, you got to stay within your approach. You know that. I mean, hit, hitting, you're not gonna, you're not gonna stay on fire the whole year. So you've got mm -hmm. to stay, you know, with your approach. The biggest thing is, is we have to uh, remember strike zone discipline is key. And then when we get into, you know, favorable counts, we've got to get our a swing off and uh, not chase. Mm. One last thing for you. I know you moved, you moved uh, Alford up to leadoff spot, Collins to the third. What are you trying to generate there with that switch? Yeah, no, I mean, Slate hit a lot of leadoff for us early when uh, Corey was uh, getting his shoulder back. And and so I just, yeah, you, you, you're just trying to, you know, as Chris alluded to, you're trying to jumpstart your offense and try try a few different things. There, there's, no, uh, there's no method to that one tonight. Gotcha. Listen, we'll let you get going. Always a pleasure to visit with you, Wes. Thanks much. Thanks, and go dogs. We will see Slate Alford, the former Mississippi State Bulldog. He is on deck behind Sebastian Murillo, who hits ninth in this lineup. Then it's Charlie Condon and Corey Collins. Murillo 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Lifts this one up in the air out into center field, but that's where Isaac is, and he'll make the catch for one down. Sometimes you just got to mix it up, Dave. Yeah. You know, like like when you go to the store and just buy a new driver, just like like the driver's going to fix your tee game. You know what I mean? Like that's that's right. kind of what he's doing there. And it usually does for like two weeks. <laughs> and then you realize you're the same player. <laughs> oh, boy, when they when those reps see you walk in the door, you talk about oh, yeah. a whale. They know they oh, yeah. got one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try anything. Anything for a championship. Slate Alford last <laughs> night coming back to Starkville. Got a few, heard a few of the Boo Birds. Of course, Gerangelo looked like, like he was ready to pitch, but our home plate umpire, Ray Gregson, says, you know, you got to wait. Just because he steps in doesn't mean I've given you the go ahead sign. You got to uh -huh. wait for me. And that's yep. been a topic by a couple of coaches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't ready. These, these pitchers are, are now so trained on the pitch clock, they want to go. Some of these guys want to go before the hitter actually is engaged. And the hitter still gets some time, right? Like, obviously, he's got to be ready to go at about 12 seconds. But he, he does get his five, six seconds in between pitches. The pitcher can't quick pitch him until the hitter has engaged. That's nasty. Boy, it didn't matter. That Ooh. was just a nasty pitch. 
from Gerangelo Sanja. And a stare down. Uh, how about a right on right change piece? Watch this thing dive down and in. Just Ooh. dirty. And then a stare down. Uh, he, he wasn't happy with that. And again, I don't know that it was Slate Alford's, Slate Alford's uh, call there. But yeah, he's uh, whatever, whatever gets you motivated, kid. And now it's Charlie Condon, who he's got twice a little line drive to short and struck him out his last time up. And quickly 0-2. Just last week, Condon was hitting 525. His average has dipped down to 469. Two outs in the inning and nobody on. Well, he put him away with the breaking ball last time. And, you know, he's feeling the change up there. Spiked that one. Seems to be in command of all his arsenal right now. Uh-oh. That ball is just blistered. Will it stay fair or foul? <laughs> that is a home run for Charlie Condon. It sneaks just inside the pole. And that is a laser off the bat of Charlie Condon for number 20 on the year. And we are tied at two. 110. And they do not want that one out there in the left field seats, but somebody might want to keep that one, see if they can get an autograph on it. So they go back to the breaking ball, and no, sir. You throw a cement mixer in the middle of the plate to Charlie Condon, and you better ask the umpire for another baseball. Just a one iron around the left field foul pole. And that'll get the offense going. When your star is down, it's tough for the rest of the guys to feel great about their offense. But now Condon gets going again, and we got ourselves a tie ball game. Oh my gosh, that is blistered. Yes. That didn't get over the fence by much. I hope it didn't hurt that lady. You better have your head on a swivel. I know the people out in left field like to enjoy themselves. You, you better. Oh, look at her. Is she, she all right? I was I was kind of kidding, but now I'm I'm hoping everybody's okay. That that ball will hurt your feelings. I was fortunate enough last Saturday, a week ago, to watch him with a five-hit game. Well, she, got, she got an ice pack? You know there's going to be a lot of ice out there. If she needs ice, she'll be able to find it. There's a lot of cold things out in left field. <laughs> Let's see if she's... Looks like she got it on the foot. Foot, yeah. Better than the dome. I'm sure there's some folks out there that can help her numb that thing. That one's lifted in the air. You missed your chance there. Well, maybe Charlie will sign one for her. Yeah, that would be the nice thing to do. Good call. She'd probably still throw it back. Look, he's checking it out. He's like, hope she's, hope she's all right. It's easier to take that, though, when you hit a, as opposed to a foul ball. It's easier to, I guess, from a player standpoint, that you hit somebody in the foot on a home run. Yeah. Makes you feel yeah, a little I mean, better. They at least had some time to react. <laughs> but, you know, Charlie's actually probably out there thinking, like, man, it feels like a month since I hit a homer. It's been, like, 12 at-bats. <laughs> number 20 on the year, the best number in college baseball. That one has popped up out into center field. And there is Charlie making his way over to make the catch. So Wes Johnson said he played every position in the fall, but pitcher and catcher. They played him every pitcher, catcher, and second base. They even played him some at shortstop. And, you know, Wes is very modern and likes to look at things through 
different lenses, and one of those was he's going to do different things with the lineup based on his pitcher, based on the opposing pitcher, how he wants to shape the defense based on what he thinks the most likely results are, all those kinds of things. And so he was searching for defensive flexibility in the fall. And I was talking with Mark Etheridge, the D1 baseball writer, about it. And he said they came out of the fall saying Charlie Condon's our, our, our most versatile defender. And you look right there at his, his starts by position. He's been all over the field. He hasn't started a game at short second pitcher or catcher, but everywhere else. And he's been fantastic. He's been excellent all season long on defense. And again, I, I, I can't remember a superstar player ever playing so many different spots. But I think if you're pro baseball, you're, you're pretty excited about it. And I know it's happened, Berkey, but I don't remember a guy of this caliber being a preferred walk-on and redshirting his first year. And then hitting 25 yeah. home runs, a freshman record. And then answering back with 20 in his second season as a player and leading the country in six different offensive categories for a preferred walk-on. No, it's, uh, it's a remarkable story. There's some guys going back and checking their recruiting notes on how they miss Charlie Condon. Johnny Long, the transfer catcher. Out of Naples, Florida, played two years at Florida Gulf Coast, two years at Pitt, and found his way here to Starkville. Got a little Jeff Bagwell stance going on here. We, 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 we got a really broad base. That's called filling up the batter's box right there. It's amazing how that visually shrinks your strike zone. I mean, you, you look at them, you know, if, the, if the strike zone is actually from the top of the stomach to the bottom of the knees, when you get that wide, look how shallow that makes the strike zone look on a player. So you see a lot of guys doing stuff like this right now with two strikes, just trying to really simplify. But look how small his strike zone looks. Finley gets it in there, and it'll be pop. Some tells me he's going to do okay in the world. I think he'll be all right. Drops one in there for a strike to Amani Larry, the leadoff man. And, and that's one of the reasons that you saw Finley exit this game. And the new analytics coaches that study that stuff, the third time through the lineup can be a dangerous moment for starting pitchers. Monty Larry with a ground out and a sacrifice. Three homers on the year. Average sitting at 267. We saw Zeldin a couple weeks ago. Georgia hosted Alabama. He picked up a, a win and a save in that weekend series when Georgia got the best of the Crimson Tide. He's been fantastic in conference play. Just a one, just a click above one ERA in seven plus innings leans on that breaking ball loves to spin it you're gonna see a steady dose of curveball slider cutter he'll even flip you a change up but it's it's only 40 or so percent fastball so you gotta you gotta really be ready for all speed stuff Two outs and nobody on. It's the top of the Mississippi State lineup. Now it's full of three and two. Finley, a big old boy, too, at 6'5", just a sophomore. I think you'd agree he, he's starting to become a real ace in this league yes and he'll turn things over to Tyson Harden the junior out of Dover Florida by way at Daytona State College 
62-185 getting the ball in a 2-2 ball game here to start the sixth inning. You know, interesting about Durangelo, we never saw him throw a pitch from the left side, and we're trying to find out if this is the first time since he's been at Mississippi State if he hasn't mm -hmm. thrown a pitch from both sides. And, you know, th there's been a lot of chatter this year about how much better the stuff is from the right side. And we, really, Dave, when you see the changeup that he's now working with, and you think about the fastball velos about six miles an hour firmer from the right side than the left side, you can kind of see why he wouldn't go lefty. Base hit to start things off. Logan Jordan. Four-hole hitter. We'll turn it over to Trey Phelps now. Right, I mean, the, the, the main reason to go lefty would be to have something to really combat left-handers with. Well, he's turning that changeup over in a way that he's going to get, I mean, he got Corey Collins on it. He's going to get swings and misses from left-handers. And so if the fastball is that much firmer, I can, and the command's better, I can, I can see the case to just leave him on the right side. Two left-handers in the lineup for Georgia with one. They've gone one for five so far. Collins had the double in the first inning. Two and oh the count. Yeah, to back me, two and one. To me, Dave, you think about Sanja and the fact that he was a position player primarily coming to college, right? And then last year, mostly out of necessity, he gets thrust in the SEC spotlight. And while he had his struggles, he also had some, I mean, he made 13 starts, right? Took the ball pretty much every weekend. And now you see the way the stuff in the command is trending. And you know he's got the athleticism and obviously the uniqueness of being able to turn around if you want him to. Like, I don't know, man. He, he becomes, to me, a very intriguing draft prospect. Lifted in the air. Out to right center. Catch is made there for the first out of the inning. Boy, just a gorgeous night. Started in the mid 60s. Sunset was outstanding. Perky, are you going to go find a place to watch the eclipse? Um, I'm sure we will catch it. I got five young ones in this house. They'll all be interested. Well, the sun. Ben McDonald right there. Good. Wait for old Dale I mean, Brown. Could, could we not have put like Tony, the Tony Gwynn on there instead of Ben? Like, did we really need Ben? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed Tony Gwynn. Okay, so I guess we didn't have anybody else to put, so we put Ben. Right, because he had to have four on each side to make it. <laughs> <laughs> symmetrical so we just had to put Ben in there you know I I, I said this to some kids you know you know Dave I, I don't have to tell you but we live in the world of specialization now with with a lot of kids and you know I'm passionate about multiple sports and I think about the fact that Tony Gwynn is certainly on the short list of all-time greatest hitters and he played his entire college basketball career like he didn't hit in the winter Four years of college. This dude's hooping. And then he just walks into the big leagues and starts hitting 350. It's pretty remarkable. I 
I guess you agree. I guess you agree it's pretty remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the give and take there, Dave. That was that was splendid. Did this hit him? I believe it did. On the back foot. And that'll be an easy one. Mississippi State looking for a base runner here in the bottom of the sixth inning, and they'll start the inning off in fine fashion. And now you get the very dangerous Dakota Jordan coming to the plate. Oh, big swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Jordan one for two, had that base hit, brought in two runs to give Mississippi State a two to one lead, but Georgia answered back. Zeldin in relief of Leighton Finley. Mississippi State, five and five in the SEC. Georgia at four and six. But Georgia's lost three of their last four. They did beat Georgia State in their midweek game, 10 to one. We talked about it, where, where this Mississippi State team could be when eight of their 11 losses have been by one run. We get a chance, our first chance here to see Marshawn over at first base. He's 12 for 12 on the year and stolen bases. And we heard Lim say he's literally one of the best base runners he's ever coached. And so he gave him a little grace on the pickoff at second base that happened earlier in the game. But you can tell he's starting to time Zeldin up over there. Boy, Collins had to make a nice stab. Well, it's really a great scenario if you're Marshawn, right? You, you got a, a hitter, you got a breaking ball pitcher. You got a hitter up to bat that you know the uh, opposition wants to throw breaking balls to. So this is just one of those things where you don't have to get a great jump. You just, you just have to be on time. Ooh, he had it. He's got to steal. If you're going to do the double mitt, the double, the <laughs> double oven mitt, you, you got to run. Well, you know where I stand on the double oven mitt, Dave. To me, like, you're, you're by wearing a oven mitt, or I guess an oven mitt, you, KP would have killed me for that. You, you're saying that one of my thumbs is more important than my other thumb. Like, if the point is to protect your fingers... Like, wouldn't you wear both? Right. Well, I mean, that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. So good for him. And, you know, the theory is people wear them on their left because your left hand leads when you're sliding to the next base. But as you see right here for a base dealer, when they're picking off all the time, your right hand is the one leading. Right? So theoretically, they're both exposed. And another throwback. Now, this is where you go. This is where you go. The crowd's booing. It's an 0-2. I don't love stealing 0-2, though, because you could get pitch outs. But the fact that he's picked two times in a row usually means that he wants to bounce a breaking ball. Go. There he goes. Here's the throw. Got him. Nicely Not in time. Done. Nicely done. And that's is how you steal bases right there. Well done. You got to have the nerve to go. You got to have a feel for when the pitcher's going to deliver to the plate. And then you got the speed to finish it off. But there you see a change up. And even though Jordan goes down swinging, Marshawn got him there on an 0-2 count. Very close, but the tag a little late. Didn't get there to the waist. And Marshawn now 13 out of 13 swiping bags. They did get the strikeout. But it turns over to Hunter Hines now, who has struck out a couple of times tonight.
Well, Hines, last at bat, Dave, struck out on three straight changeups. And again, he's got a guy in Zeldin here that is throwing 60% off speed pitches. Like to me, this is one of those ABs if you're Hunter Hines, where you're just sitting soft the whole at bat. If he if he wants to throw back to back fastballs, he wins. But you gotta be sitting on it off speed stuff. That'll be strike two. Jeff Head said he did go. Big breaking ball, and Hines tries to put the break. Oh, I think I think Hines has a case there. I don't think the barrel went. Boy, nice little backhand pick there by Gonzalez. Dallas has always been a great defensive catcher, but he's brought a little offense to the plate this year. Hitting over 300 with five home runs. That one stays inside, three and two. Cutter, cutter. I, I, I think he's I think he's about to get a change up here, Dave. Cutter in, cutter in. He's either going to the breaking ball or the change up here. What a pitch. 3-2. Froze him out number two. That is the third straight strikeout for Hunter Hines tonight. And that's just the big breaking ball, right? Just the top to bottom. And you can see Hines. Watch him just buckle right here. Buckle and that thing takes a downturn as it gets to home plate. And it's been a rough one tonight for Mr. Hines. Seventh strikeout by Georgia pitching. That takes us to Connor Heisek. Oh, for two with a strikeout. He's seen his average drop to 339. Came in at 346. One for three last night with a home run. Boy, Zeldin's been all over the place with his pitches. I mean, some have been missed badly, but then he comes back and sneaks one by you. Just showed us a great breaking ball a minute ago. He's kept Gonzalez on his toes behind the plate. Throw back to second. And if Rashawn gets picked off again, <laughs> he might want to just run right back to the, uh, to the yeah. apartment. I think his grace meter will be empty at that point. I think, <laughs> I think Lim might, might say something at that point. Ninety-three on that fastball just off the plate. Usually, a guy like Zeldin, even though the fastball is ninety-three, he, he wants to he wants to get you out with with breaking stuff or, or or some sort of off-speed pitch. So, a lot of times, what you'll see the fastball will be just intentionally off the plate, so he can go back to something soft. Fly ball out to center field. Condon is there, shy of the track, and he'll make the catch. And that will end the ending. So Mississippi State will leave a runner. We have played six, all tied up at two here at Stark. Let's see how that plays out. Yeah, it will be. I, I kind of, I'm kind of into it, you know. I, I think the coaches will like it too. What's that? Certainly puts a lot of pressure on every game. Yeah, it does. And I also think for the top four seeds that get the double bye, you know, they'll just They'll just have their, it's just another weekend for their starters. Now, they, they can choose to pass on that if they want and rest their guys for a week if they think that's best. But you don't get in that situation where your, your pitching staff can get, you know, really stretched. Boy, you have to play on a Tuesday. It'll be tough to get to championship Sunday. Two and two the count. Georgia and Mississippi State tied at two. Mississippi State won game one last night, six to one. Didn't have a whole lot of hits, just six. But they kept Georgia at bay, allowed the dogs from Athens just five hits and one run. 
to the right side, and that'll be a fair ball and an easy play over there for Hunter Hines. Pitching and defense has been outstanding in this game. It's, uh, you know, I think one of the reasons that you really can be bullish on Mississippi State right now is the way they're defending, and we have seen that in this ball game. They've only made two errors in SEC play, Dave. They're fielding 994 in conference play. Gonzalez first pitch popped up glove there by Mershon who's been exceptional as well whether it's second base or shortstop Mershon another one of those defensive players he has just one error in 80 chances he's been a defensive gem for Mississippi State this year yeah I mean and again this is some of the things that they really struggled with in years past it, it is not showing up this year. Like, the, the pitching has been really good. The defense has been excellent. And they still think they're getting their dude back, Nate Dome. We might see him in this series, right? And so the pitching that's been very good has a chance to get a shot in the arm getting their ace back. And, again, they're, they're fielding it better than anybody in the conference. There's a violation. So a ball issued. And now Chris Lamona says that the batter wasn't ready to go, so how can he throw a pitch is what he's saying. So Marillo will get ball two. That one's down in the dirt. Well, it looks like. I mean, he's he's definitely late, but what Lim's arguing is that Marillo was not in the box. And then I think Harden then stepped back out. He's obviously upset about something that he felt like was allowed by Ray Gregson for the hitter that, that caused his pitcher to be late. So. leads to a walk, so you, now he's really not happy. Results from today around the Southeastern Conference. And Slate Alford fouls this one back into the seats. I think one of the things that stands out to me is Kentucky wins again. It's unbelievable. They're 10-1 in conference They're not just winning, play. Dave. They are, like, they are winning with authority. 7-0 today over Alabama. And the other one is the fact that Missouri's taken the series from Florida. Mm -hmm. Tigers have yeah, won I would one say, conference game. Yeah, the, the headlines to me are Florida really looks to be scuffling. Kentucky looks to be legit. And LSU's dug themselves a real hole right like those would be the three headlines for me headed into to next week I mean the Kentucky 10 and 1 is one thing they're 10 and 1 their margin of victory is insane I mean they, they are winning comfortably the one two off the fist to short Rashawn charges field man how good was that been much else, but those two have had some loud swings of the bat. Both of our starting pitchers did a nice job. Durangelo Sanja for Mississippi State. We found out, by the way, for uh, Sanja that it's the first time this year that he has been strictly one side throwing the, the ball from the mound. Nice play. It's short from the Georgia Bulldogs, Colby Branch. But Gerangelo last year did it a couple times. He threw from the right side strictly last year. But the first time this year, he's been strictly from the right side. Leighton Finley, four and two thirds, four strikeouts. He was hovering around 96 and 97 with his fastball tonight. Looked very good. So a pinch hitter coming up. For Mississippi State is Jackson McKenzie. 
the freshman out of Pace, Florida. Just McKenzie's ninth appearance of the year. He's 11th at bat. Has a couple of hits. Hitting for downs in that DH spot. This is one of the freshmen that Chris Lamonis was speaking so highly of when he talked about his freshman class. It feels like they got a lot of talent. You know, you're always balancing playing the, the veteran players with getting your youngsters experience. That didn't last very long, though, for McKenzie. Nah, it's a tough they be facing a veteran in Selden who can just manipulate the baseball in so many different ways. There's the big bender just the depth of this breaking ball Oof. is a tough ask for a young hitter. Out number two. Logan Kohler talking to Jake Gotro, hitting coach for Mississippi State. Goaler one for two with a single score to run. His average is to 209. Boy, Jake, one of the hardest working recruiters. You see him all over the place in the summertime. You go to any big event, and there will be Jake trying to find him some talent. Yeah, he's and, and he has done it at a very high level for a very long time here, seven years in Starkville, and he has recruited some real dudes to put on the Mississippi State uniform. One and oh to Kohler. Pops that one up, out to left field. Clayton Chadwick oh lost it. And it bounces over the wall for a ground rule double. Wow. That's what that's what Jake Gotro was saying. He goes, I need you just to elevate this to left. Yep. yep. It's gonna get up high. He's not gonna be able to find it. It's gonna get you a double. Yeah, put a little slice spin on it at the end. And then we'll hook it late, right? We'll slice, spin, then with a little hook action. What happened was, did you see Chadwick took his eye off the ball just a touch to find the wall. And then when he looked up to relocate the baseball, he had overrun it. That's a lonely feeling out there when you give up extra bases with two outs in a tie game late. Or you are rooting for your pitcher right now. Nine hole. Hitter steps in. Johnny Long, the catcher. He gets one for two tonight. It's going to go down, by the way, as a double for Kohler. There's a strike. It's 0 and 2. transfer from Naples, Florida. A couple of years at Pittsburgh where he started 28 games last year behind the plate. Just a handful of games a year before that. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting the, the way the portal works and the way teams end up finding players and locating players, but Mississippi State needed a backstop, and Long's done a nice job for him, especially behind the plate. Go ahead, run. Stands at second base. Boy, Long just 
gets a piece of that one, and we'll see another pitch. Well, and again, this is one of those ABs where I'm not saying you totally give him the fastball, but you have to be committed to letting the ball get deep because you, you just know you're getting something soft. Zeldin does not want to go down on his fastball. He wants to go down on one of his breaking pitches if he's going to go down. And so you just have to be aware of that as a hitter here in a two-strike count with a runner in scoring position. Now it's full at three and two. Oh, back up breaking ball right there. That did look like a ball, but that is a tough pitch to take with two strikes. That thing went all around the strike zone. And he misses inside again. So Johnny Long draws the walk. If you're Wes Johnson, you're over there in that dugout, and you're going, this has got the makings of a bad ending, right? You hit a fly ball to left field that looked like it should have just been a friendly third out. And then you got the 9-0 hitter who works a walk on two breaking balls that just don't quite catch enough of the plate or any of the plate, and now you're back to the top of the order. Zeldin spins one in there for a strike. Amani Larry. Ground out a sacrifice and a strikeout. Goes back inside with another breaking ball. Yeah, that thing just keeps backing up on him, Dave. He's, he's trying to get that thing down to the outside edge of the plate. And that thing just keeps backing up on him. Georgia should be sitting in the dugout right now after a misplayed ball off the bat of Kohler, who stands at second base. Two and one the count. West. Next thing you know, a couple walks. Boom. Home run and it's a whole different off the world. field over there. Yeah, definitely. Two and two now. Oh, you stay with that breaking ball right here. Yeah, that's the shorter slider, right? He kind of went away from the bigger breaking ball. He's got that cutter slider. Probably going right back to it here. Boy, now another 3-2 pitch. Yeah, you got the runners moving as you see Gonzalez motioning to the infield to make sure they all know throw it across because the, the runners will be moving here. <laughs> Lifted out to left. This time Chadwick able to make a play and Mississippi State will leave a couple on. The freshman also hitting 316 on the year. Now it's time to get some strikes, and it's a tough road to hoe for the young man with Condon, Collins, and Jordan. Two, three, and four in this Georgia lineup. And that's what he likes to throw, Dave. The, the freshman, you know, you, you tend to think of a freshman, if he's talented enough to get on the mound in big moments in SEC games, just being a fireballer. But he loves that breaking ball. Opponents just hitting 171 against it. Sixty two percent sliders. Two and one against to count. left handers, excuse me. It's that's just against left handers. Overall, it's a it's 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 about fifty five percent or forty five percent breaking balls overall when you combine lefties and righties, but he loves to spin it. He loves to spin it. Yeah. 
Jack swing at the plate. He did go. Condon goes down. And a big first out for the young left-hander out of Elk Grove, California. Let's take a look at this sequence. We, we said he loves to spin it. And this at-bat will show you exactly what we mean as he leans heavy on the breaking ball there against Charlie Condon. I think what we what we see there, Dave, just one fastball in that sequence. Yeah. Now he gets to face the left-hander, Corey Collins. Let's take a look at this sequence here. You get slider down and in. Another slider, he spikes that one, right? Then we go the breaking ball that misses just a touchdown. There's the fastball. Boy, Condon hadn't missed many of those, Dave. Change up down the way and doing a nice job. And really an, an interesting at bat there from Condon, Dave. We saw him miss a pitch down Broadway and chase a couple out of the zone, which he hadn't had a whole lot of at bats like that this year. Steve, it's highly touted. Certainly one of the premier players in the country coming out of high school, which ranked in the top 70 nationally. <laughs> Lifted high in the air. Out to left. Bryce Chance. Boy, the lights must be tough out there. He didn't play that one as cleanly as you would, would hope. Yeah, left field looks a little adventurous right now. No wind to speak of. No. Yeah, it's, it's, it's odd. It almost, it, it looks like the wind is playing tricks on left fielders, but the flags are pointed straight down. Stevens. We'll start Jordan off with a strike. Stevens was actually considered the second best first baseman coming out of the state of California last year. But two time, perfect game, All American. He keeps swinging at the way he's swinging. It doesn't have a ton of at bats, but has six hits and 19 at bats, including a home run and a double. Wonder if he might be on the same path as. But Jack Caglione down in Florida. Yeah, I mean, he, he's certainly capable of it. I think the, the biggest challenge for two-way guys is just the workload to take. Six three two ten for Stevens. You know he can probably put on another 15, 20 pounds on that frame. Yep. Nice job there holding off on a breaking ball that's been getting a lot of swings and misses. Ooh. Boy, that just misses three and two. So we, we've seen the back foot breaking ball that starts middle and works down and in to the right hander. That was the back door breaking ball that started off the plate and worked back to the edge. And walked him. Team that. They're playing to, to stay in the mix. Dylan Carter runs over there at first base for Jordan. Well, he just feels like the next team that scores. Just one run. Yep. Going to win this thing, the way this game has been going today. Mississippi State had two on last inning, couldn't get one across. Trey Phelps, a couple of singles. Just a freshman. He was rated as the number two high school third baseman nationally. The 
paying Carter a lot of attention here. Too low count with two outs. You figure he's letting Phillips hit. They certainly are trying to keep him close. Wow. That one is shot out in the gap and right. Picked up on one hop out there by Heisek. They're going to send the runner. Carter coming home to throw well in time, and oh, wow. he is out. Oh, wow. And Johnny Long. There is no malicious contact. <laughs> However, the aftermath of what happened after the play at the plate is being reviewed. Oh, goodness. Oh, wait, we, we have another review? So, a 10 minutes at this point, 10 minutes, 40 minutes. 40 minutes. And so here is Mershon against Zeldin, who has had to wait longer than 40 minutes, probably close to an hour since he last threw a pitch on the mound. Mershon looks at a first pitch strike. He has been hit by a pitch. He's walked 0 for 1, and he looks at strike 2. Another breaking ball in there for a strike. And again, it's 2 2 here in the bottom of the eighth inning. To the right side. That one gets past Chadwick. Clayton Chadwick was out in left field. Innings one through seven, but has moved to second base where Slate Alford was playing. This ball's hit hard to his glove side. Just looked like he crawled up the, the glove a little bit, jumped on him, and that makes the, the home crowd happy. It's the leadoff runners on here in the bottom of the eighth. Here is Steven Spolita. His first at bat as he hits in the spot, the three hole for Dakota Jordan. The leading hitter for Mississippi State out of this game, apparently. This is just the sixth appearance of the year for Spolita. Five at bats. Just one hit. Three and fouls that one back. Zeldin's got a pretty good fastball. We just haven't seen a whole lot of it. So there's our answer on Hunter Hines, Dave. Yeah, he is gone because that's Nate Chester. Man, that 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 really just doesn't make any sense. Breaking ball in there for a strike. One and two. Zeldin in relief of Leighton Finley got the start. Zeldin has thrown 52 pitches, been solid out of this bullpen, given up two hits, struck out four, and walked just one. Foul to the right side.
Rick, your thoughts about with nobody on, uh, nobody out, runner at first, a good base runner like Mershon, maybe not try to do some stuff on the base pass with him, lay a bunt down, be creative at this point in a tie ball game. There he goes. Yeah. A one-two pitch. I would say with the base stealer as efficient as Marshawn, I would just let him do it as opposed to wasting an out to get him over. Of course, you're, you know, yeah. you're in a two-strike mode now, so you're not going to do it. Look at him trying to pick stuff up with his oven. Yeah. <laughs> he can't do it. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Uh, they had to put, I don't know what that was. They had to put it back in his back pocket. Um, but, you know, I think with, with with what you're at now in your lineup, if you know if you record this out right here, don't be surprised to see a hit and run maybe with the next hitter. To the right side, and the only play is over to first as Mershon was on the go. So now they get the runner at scoring position with one down. And here comes Nate Chester to the plate. Nate Chester has only played in nine games. He has started seven, does have 22 at-bats to his credit, three hits, hitting 136. Nate the junior out of Kansas City, transferred in from John Logan Community College. Welcome to the game in a 2-2 on a Saturday night. Zeldin keeps pumping strikes. 0 and 1. I just realized that's Corey Collins behind the plate. Gonzalez is out of the game. So there's another one. Ground ball to the left side. That'll be out number two. So Murillo makes the play at third base. Hey, Chester is retired, two outs. So Connor Heisek gets, gets a titchley walk, so they'll have him at first and second now. So now Nolan Stevens, he will hit for Bryce Chance. We saw Nolan on the mound earlier, the freshman out of California. Surprised if you see a round tripper here from the young star. Lace is one foul. don't hear the term round tripper much anymore, Burke. I'm glad you got that in. It's refreshing. Yeah. It's old school. Big swing and a miss, one and two. They're going to say flat foul ball. Either way, strike two. So Corey Collins catching for Fernando Gonzalez, who apparently was ejected.
What a crazy night. You just don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> you just don't ever know. That's why we play them. Saturday night at the Dube. Saturday night in the SEC, it can get weird. There's no doubt about it. Tonight is, is one of the all-time weird ones. That is a call. Swing by Jeff Head down the third baseline, and Zeldin does his job. Gone. Gonzalez is gone. Colby Branch, though, is not gone. Bulldog shortstop steps in. Colby 0 for 3 with a strikeout. One and one. Schulke, two and a third last night. Two and a third scoreless last night. No hit ball out of the Mississippi State bullpen. This is a funky look now. I mean, that, that is a pretty dirty arm angle with a really good Frisbee slider. Ground ball. Boy, they had him play perfectly. Chester, who was out at second base for Imani Larry, didn't have to move to catch that ground ball, hit right at him. So Cal Stevens. Is out in left field. He was our starter last night. That's how deep we're going now for Mississippi State. And did a heck of a job, we might add. Yeah, Cal on the bump last night. Six and two-thirds, five hits, seven strikeouts. Now I guess to shag some. See, all that BP shagging pays off right here. This is where That's that it. work comes in. So Cal Steven out in left field. Ijack is still Dotson. out center. Luke Dotson in right field. Yeah, and you've got uh, Spolita's over at third. This one's touched out to right. Is it deep enough to get out of here? It is. Chadwick with the home run to give Georgia a 3-2 lead. His fourth long ball of the year could be the difference in this one tonight. And that's some uh, some serious emotion there in the Georgia Georgia dugout. You talk about being able to hear a pin drop. There is no juice left in this building, and that's just a hanging breaking ball. Chadwick does a fantastic job. Watch him gather and wait and get in his legs, and that is a launch piece out to right. There's your old-fashioned round tripper, Dave Neal, as the Bulldogs take a three to two lead. The Georgia Bulldogs, that is. That look pretty much summarizes the last hour for Mississippi State fans. And now Zeldin, who is our pitcher, grabbing a bat. Zeldin does not have an at bat all season long. This but is he's the highlighted his baseball career. Day. This is <laughs> it <done> right here. <laughs> Look at him. He's game facing it too. Like he's got a little pre pre swing uh, move. Look, he got a little plate tap, a little half swing. He's got a little rhythm to him. Big swing and a miss. That'll be the second out. That was his chance. Well, I mean, if you're a pitcher, you're dying to get an A-B, and you get it off Shulky, like, thanks a lot. <laughs> I, get, I get the the funky sidearm submariner Frisbee guy. Appreciate it. Probably had to borrow some gloves. Didn't even know what size bat he probably needed. Clearly didn't have a helmet. Now it's Sebastian Murillo. 
high chopper to the right side. Underhand. Heading to the bottom of the ninth inning. Brian Zeldin still on the mound for the Georgia Bulldogs. He's in line to pick up a win if they can get three more outs. The Atlanta native and a graduate of Penn University, the grad transfer. Just got his first at bat. Now trying to close it out here. As he faces Jackson McKenzie. Jackson McKenzie, another two-way player for Mississippi State, the freshman out of Pace, Florida. A 182 hitter on the year, couple of hits and 11 at-bats. He looks at ball two down. Boy, at the knees, painting it 94, his best fastball of the night. Ooh. He is deep into his K strut after that one. Just a paint job on the outside edge. And how about the All State play of the day right here? Clayton Chadwick, a bomb to right field, and that is the difference maker to this point. Will it stick, Dave Neal? Will it stick? We will find out in a matter of moments. Luke Dotson, the freshman out of Marietta, getting an at-bat. Another two-way player. The Mount Perrin Christian in the Atlanta area. This is Luke's first at-bat of the year. His first career at-bat, and it didn't last very long. Three pitches, and he goes down. Two outs. Berkey, I've been doing this a long time, and I don't have any idea. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this scenario that we have had here in the last inning. This is crazy. And, and, and to, let's not make light of the fact that Zeldin sat there for 40 minutes in his dugout, right, and has come out maybe even sharper than he was before the delay. And not, let's not forget the fact that he had to sit there, by the way, while Georgia was at the plate. So it was almost an right. hour before he yeah. probably threw a pitch. And Powell pops that one up. Powell in this game after the whole Johnny Long, call it, debacle, if you will, at the play at the plate that's got everything started. This one is sharply hit to the left side and a base hit. So Powell's first swing in a while. It's Powell's ninth hit of the year in just 12 games. Gonna see Steven here? We are. Wow. This would be something right here. So Cal, now Cal Steven, last night's starting pitcher, came in the game to play left field last inning. Is having to grab a bat because there's just nobody left. A chance to be a hero. Something tells me he had a few home runs in Williamsport, Indiana, growing up. Boy, okay. got 92, just missed it. Okay, get your swing off, young fella, all right. Transfer from Purdue. Swing and a miss, and this one's over. Zeldin will get the win in relief. 
of Leighton Finley in Georgia. Yo, listen up, let me tell you about love and loss Our hearts collide, the lines are crossed In the dance of passion, we find our way But sometimes love leads us astray From the highs of ecstasy to the lows of pain Love's a roller coaster, driving us insane In the warmth of affection, we find our bliss But when it's gone, we're left with emptiness Through the tears we shed and the battles we fought We'll find solace in the lessons taught In the depths of despair, we search for light But sometimes love fades like stars in the night in the silence of solitude we mourn the loss But through the pain we'll rise like moss For love's a journey with twists and turns But even in darkness a new flame burns In the ashes of heartache a phoenix rises With love as our guide we'll find new surprises Love and loss and in the journey of life Will we make our stand? Through the tears we shed and the battles we fought We'll find solace in the lessons taught For let's cherish the love we have In this fleeting life For in love's embrace We find no strife And though loss may come We'll carry on For love's eternal flame Love and loss, we find our strength in the ebb and flow. We'll go to any length, for in the tapestry of life, love's the thread binding us together even after we're dead.